Sigma Tiger News, all up in your grill with the hottest, juiciest beef online. What do we got today? Cancer everywhere. P. Diddy dying? The Israeli war hammer. <laughs> back to the Sigma Tiger News and you're here with the Big Sig Tig. What do we got today? Boom. Global cancer phenomenon. It's not just America. The UK, Japan, South Africa and Australia are among dozens of countries suffering mystery spikes of all different kinds of tumors in young people. Huh? Well, uh, what's causing the colon cancer epidemic in young people? Cases are up 79%. What the heck? Doctors across the world are sounding the alarm over a surging epidemic of young people being diagnosed with cancers more commonly associated with the elderly. Yeah, we covered this a bunch of times. So what the heck's going on? Between 1990 and 2019, cases of cancer in young people across the globe have increased by 79%. Deaths have risen 28%. So, I mean, the fight against cancer is it's, it's a losing battle. How can they spend so much money on something and have no new treatments and more people dying. I mean, the only treatment for cancer is chemo or radiation. And you know the survival rate or the, the you know, the heal rate of chemo? 3%. That's it. 3%. You got a 3% chance of survival. So they're trying to kill the cancer before they kill all of your good cells. Because it kills everything. So like, we hope we get the cancer first. This is the best they got. Billions of dollars. 60 years of studying and the best we got is poison you and hopefully you don't die. Nearly every continent is experiencing an increase in various types of cancer in people under 50 years old, which is particularly problematic as the disease tends to be caught in later stages in the population because most doctors aren't trained to look at it in young people. Yeah, you come in, I'm not feeling so good. Ah, you're young. Come back in two weeks. No big deal. Two weeks later, they come back in stage four. They're presenting stage four all the time. Like That's crazy. In their 20s. It's not that the doctors missed it, it's that it's happening. The disparities of rates and types of the disease are puzzling scientists and have prompted some to kick off multi-decade research projects that will involve hundreds of thousands of people from around the world. Globally, Australia has seen the highest number of early onset cancer diagnoses in the world with a rate of 135 per 100,000 people. Nearby New Zealand has the second highest rate. Okay, so what's going on in the Southern Hemisphere? Breast cancer is the top disease in Australia. Colon cancer ranks first in its neighbor. Breast cancer? Huh. Perhaps uh, it's the hormones they're taking. Is there an, like, an exorbitant amount of people on birth control pills down there? Anyway, let's have a look at this map. This is where the cancer is happening all over. Obviously, you got purple Australia with everyone has cancer, apparently. Canada not looking so hot. 87.2 cases per 100,000. Or that's the U.S., sorry. Canada, 76.9. Russia, even less. What are they doing? What about Japan, where all the centurions live? Africa, how come they're doing so good? How come no one in Africa got cancer? What about India? What the heck? I'll tell you what's going on. This is my personal opinion. It's the food. Europe, America, Canada, Australia. The G7 countries. Hmm? What kind of food are they eating? FDA approved. It's good. It's fine. Well, FDA approves a whole bunch of stuff in America that's not approved in Europe. It's the food. Why is your stomach getting jacked up? It's the food you eat. Why are your breasts getting filled with cancer? It's probably because you're taking tons of hormones. Are men's breast cancers up in uh, Australia? Unlikely. Anyway, do they have a theory? Is there a theory? Look, breast cancer, 82. Prostate, 36. Cervix, uterine, 21. Lung, 19. Collectoral, 16. Liver, 6. Stomach, 4. Esophagus, 1. Cancer rates in people under 50, just increasing exponentially. Asia, Japan, South Korea may be close proximity and similar economically, but they have different rates of early onset colon cancer is increasing faster rate in South Korea. 
Yeah, South Korea is way more westernized. They have tons of, like, uh, what is it? Fast food restaurants. American fast food restaurants. Apologies. I'm dealing with a little bit of a sniffle here. Cancers increasing the fast include throat and prostate cancers. Early onset cancers with the highest mortality include breast, tracheal, lung, stomach, and colon. Perhaps I should go to the doctor and get my tracheal checked because it is jacked up right now. Experts have long speculated the increasing obesity rates and early cancer screenings may be behind the rise, as well as high-fat diets, alcohol consumption, tobacco use. Yeah, obvious. Like, Anyway. Scientists in South Africa say they have identified the first known outbreak of rabies in seals. Oh, what? Big deal. Is it a big deal? Yikes. Well, what is rabies? It's a disease that gets in your body and it makes you like afraid to drink water and afraid of water. So like perhaps all the seals are washing up. At least 24 Cape Fur seals that were found dead or euthanized in various locations of South Africa's west and south coast had rabies, state veterinarian Dr. Leslie Van Helden said. Rabies, which affects mammals, can be passed to people. It's almost always fatal once symptoms appear. Rabies spreads via saliva, usually through bites, but also sometimes when animals lick or groom each other. The virus has long been seen in wild animals such as raccoons, coyotes, foxes, jackals, and domestic dogs. It has never been recorded spreading around marine mammals. Kind of like this bird flu. What's going on? Seals can catch that too. Wilding out in the sea. Former New York City COVID czar held secret drug-fueled sex parties during global pandemic. Says New Yorkers would have been pissed if they found out because he was running entire COVID response for the city. Yeah, obviously. What a hypocrite. Dr. Jay Varma, former senior advisor for public health in New York City's mayor's office. I had been kind of sneaky about it. I was running the entire COVID response for the city. We rented a hotel. We all took like, you know, Molly ecstasy mdma eight out of ten of us were in a room like just being naked with friends you know normal stuff we went to some like you know underground dance party underneath a bank on wall street we were all rolling meaning like high as f uh this was not covid friendly i did all this deviant sexual stuff while i was you know like on tv and stuff the only way i could do this job for the city was if i had some way to blow off steam every now and then like semen onto other people is that what he's talking about because it sounds like it and there's an image of the guy a total freak the full report available on youtube if you want to check it out steven crowder so that was just some of the quotes from him so yeah obviously people are upset i mean you had the dude boris johnson over there in uh the uk and they were having parties and he was like oh everyone gonna stay home and mask off and they're chumming it up drinking and having a laugh like is there a two-tier system on Earth? Yeah, there always has been. The royals and the peasants. It's still like that now. It's just a little bit grayer. All right, Diddy, life in danger behind bars. Former MDC Brooklyn Warden claims, well, he must have heard the news about his freak offs being challenged and he was not happy. Diddy should watch his back in prison because a former warden at the facility says he's in there. Uh, a whole lot of inmates would see killing him as a badge of honor. As you know, Diddy's currently being held in MDC Brooklyn, a notorious federal detention facility in New York City, without bail. Sources with direct knowledge tell us Diddy being held in the special housing unit away from the general population. Yeah, he's got a crib, his own little spot. He's probably got a little refrigerator there, his own private bathroom. Of course, no problems. I'm sure if he wants cigarettes, he can get them. No problem. Get some of that orange juice liquor. Cameron Lindsay, former warden of MDC Brooklyn, tells TMZ... Diddy's location in the SHU makes sense because he's a target behind bars. Yeah, sure. Whatever. Who cares? It's just a really terrible news story. Pardon me. Diddy is placed on suicide watch as video shows porn star inmate claim he was rapper sex slave. Oh, it's just getting worse and worse. What the heck? While Sean Diddy Combs is on suicide watch at New York's jail, a shocking video of a porn star who claims he was the rapper's sex slave has resurfaced online. Combs 54 was placed on suicide monitor at Brooklyn's Metropolitan Detention Center, which is standard for high-profile individual sources confirmed. Oh yeah, you know what I mean? Anyone who comes into jail is high-profile. We're going to put them on suicide watch. We're going to watch them. What? Like, you think they would have killed themselves sooner in our investigation? 
He was arrested and indicted earlier this week in Manhattan for sex trafficking, racketeering, and transportation to engage in prostitutions. Yeah. Right, he tried to give up his house for $50 million surety, and they were like, nah, we don't believe it. But he didn't run. I mean, they raided his house before he had lost to opportunity to run. Uh, his plane was located a couple of different places. But anyway, you know, the trial is going to be amazing. I hope it does go forward. I mean, like, everyone really wanted to see the Epstein trial. Well, this is your second chance, right? This is uh, the black Epstein, basically. Muhammad Al-Fayed accused of multiple rapes by staff. Cassie Cornish, Tesh Treshtrel, Keaton Stone, Erica Gornow, and Sarah Bell, the victims... Five women say they were raped by former Harrods boss Muhammad Al-Fayed when they worked at the luxury London department store. Yikes. Another man in power just getting his, like, you know what I mean? Taking it. Not getting it, just literally taking it. The BBC has heard testimony from more than 20 female ex-employees who say the billionaire who died last year at age 94 sexually assaulted or raped them. So they're going after the estate. They want some of those estate ducats. The documentary and podcast Al-Fayed, Predator at Harrods, uh, gathered evidence that during Fayette's ownership, Herod's not only failed to intervene, but helped cover up the allegations. Ooh, sounds like a Catholic church. Herod's current owners said they were utterly appalled by the allegations and that his victims had been failed, for which the source sincerely apologized. Oh, but don't come after us. It wasn't us. Yeah, so uh, we'll keep you posted on that. Italy opens doors to chemical castration for rapists and pedophiles. There you go. Boom. Prime Minister Giorgia Maloney's right-wing coalition government wants to look tough on law and order. Yeah, I mean, like, they haven't really done much since she was elected. Migrants are still flowing in. They haven't stopped any of that. She went ahead and supported uh, Zelensky 100%. So, is she, uh, like, just a puppet? We'll see. Italy moved on Wednesday toward legalizing chemical castration with MPs approving the creation of a committee that could draft laws on treating violent sex offenders with androgen-blocking drugs. And what are those? Puberty blockers. This is what they give the children, people, to make sure they can't, uh, or to make sure that they are the real gender, of course, right? We give them chemicals to make sure uh, that they're natural. Lower House Parliament in Rome passed a motion which said the treatment should be consensual, reversible, and with the aim of reducing the risk of reoffending. Okay, so, uh, yeah, it's not a punishment. It's like, hey, listen, uh, do you feel remorse about all the horror that you've caused? Uh, yes, I do. Well, would you like to take this chemical castration so you won't feel sexual arousal anymore? Uh, do I volunteer? Absolutely not. No. I don't want to do that. So we'll see. How many people are actually going to do this? Only the truly remorseful. The U.S. led a nuclear fusion for decades. Now China is in a position to win the race. Well, what, what is nuclear fusion? That's like putting something in and getting more out. Currently, we have fission, right? Where basically we're separating atoms uh, to create energy. Pardon me. The bustling city of Shanghai marks national celebrations with world-famous light shows, illuminating the skyscrapers with dazzling colors like beacons of Chinese innovation. Yeah. If you haven't seen it, it's absolutely extraordinary. They sent up like 100,000 drones and did this crazy aerial. It is here that scientists and engineers work around the clock to pursue the next big thing in global tech, from 6G internet and advanced AI to next generation robotics. It's also here on an unassuming downtown street, a small startup called Energy Singularity is working on something extraordinary. Nuclear fusion energy. South Korea is working on it too. It's called like the sun or whatever. It's like this, they're able to like create temperatures that are uh, equal to the sun, like 100,000 degrees Celsius. U.S. companies and industry experts are worried America's losing its decade-long lead in the race to master this near-limitless form of clean energy. A new fusion company spread across China, Beijing, outspends D.C. Yeah, because D.C. is spending all our money on DEI. You know, you got to get the diversity in there. No Chinese or white people, though, which is obviously a terrible thing when you're coming uh, to uh, engineering, you know. But we need... Uh, Rainbows and color and uh, short, colorful hair, and piercings and random tattoos. That's what we're looking for because that makes us strong. Everyone knows that. Well, the Chinese are not buying into it. And they're like, no, we're going to focus on Chinese people, Chinese resources, and Chinese technology. And boom, they're winning. Chinese hacking typhoons threaten U.S. infrastructure. What? Well... 
Looks like they're in the hacking as well. Chinese government is running another broad campaign to hack as many American organizations as possible, hunting the threat across critical infrastructure. Why it matters? The new hacking campaign suggests China could hold more expansive power to turn off key U.S. infrastructure that previously thought FBI Director Christopher Wray amazing individual, said the Aspen Cyber Summit on Wednesday that the Bureau and its partners hijacked thousands of devices last week that a Chinese hacking group had infected with malware. Flax Typhoon, a new China-backed hacking team, infected home routers, firewalls, storage devices, and Internet of Things devices like cameras, video recorders. Zoom in. As of June, Flax Typhoon's botnet include more than 260,000 malware-infected devices across North America, South America, Europe, Africa, Southeast Asia and Australia, according to U.S. government advisory, half of the hijacked devices were located in the U.S. Security researchers Black Lotus Lab said in the coinciding report that hackers have used the botnet to target U.S. and Taiwanese organizations in the military, government, higher education, telecommunication, defense, and IT sectors. Yeah, I guess once they infiltrate one device, then it's easier to uh, uh, lily pad leap to the next device. And they're not talking about shutting down your home internet. They're talking about shutting down, like, the beef industry, the train industry, like transportation, the uh, electrical grid, you know what I mean? Like they don't care if they shut off your YouTube or your TikTok. That was really just a test perhaps. But I mean, last year there was an issue with like the beef butchers or whatever, like, and the, their database went down and they had to start doing everything on paper, all of the orders. What about the Baltimore Bridge? A lot of people are saying that thing got hacked, that boat. Homeless population grows, putting U.S. on track for another record. I mean, and we're not talking about an Olympic record, not a good one, not one you'd boast about. The number of homeless people in the U.S. continues to grow, putting the country on pace to hit yet another record high this year. Counts from encampments, streets, and shelters are largely higher than they were in 2023, according to the preliminary data collected and reviewed by the Wall Street Journal. The numbers come from more than 250 homeless services organizations covering cities, metro areas and vast rural areas they are meant to reflect homelessness as it existed on a single night earlier this year the journal's count includes about 550,000 homeless people so far up about 10 percent from what these places reported last year the trend thus far means the u.s is likely to top the roughly 653,000 homeless people estimated in 2023 the highest number since the government started reporting comparable data in 2007. why well they're broke they got no money Although the economy is doing so well and jobs are being created and then uh, they're being revised. A million jobs got removed last year. So the government said, yeah, we've created a million jobs. And then in August, they're like, oops, put a put a couple extra zeros on there. Six to be exact. Yeah. Anyway, people got no money. People aren't buying houses, even though interest rate got dropped 50 basis points. Panic mode, panic mode. 25 is normal. Every time they dropped it 50 major recession so like look out people like if you're hard up now six months from now i mean after the election depending on who wins the war machine is primed and ready the markets they're primed and ready to go or to top out what's going to happen who gets in we'll see the people are being told everything's fine and there's a dumpster fire israeli hezbollah conflict what's going on Israeli strikes on Lebanon. Israel has carried out some of its most intense strikes on Lebanon since militant group Hezbollah began firing rockets into northern Israel last year following the October 7th attacks, which is coming. We're a couple of weeks out. A lot of people are talking about on the ground in the U.S. and Canada attacks on October 7th. So heads up. Hezbollah hits back. The militant group said it has launched tens of rockets ooh, at the Ramat David Air Base in northern Israel in retaliation. Uh, deadly Beirut attack. At least 38 people were killed, including high-level commanders of Hezbollah on Friday in an Israeli strike on southern Beirut. Among the dead is Ibrahim Akil, the leader of an elite unit who the United States had accused of involvement in the 1983 bombing that killed nearly 250 U.S. personnel. So the U.S. are like, thank you for that, Israel. Got them. Wave of explosions. The strike dealt another blow to Hezbollah with the group already reeling after thousands of small blasts its members' pagers and walkie-talkies earlier this week, killing dozens and wounding thousands of others. All right, Israeli strike decimates Hezbollah military leadership. Here's an image of what happened. Yeah, they sent a bomb in there on Friday, and uh, it just totally wreaked havoc. 
Well, this is according to the group's own death announcement. This week's attacks accounted for about 10% of the 500 Hezbollah fighters to have been killed since the group starting firing rockets. Yeah. So, this bomb that they fired off on Friday took out 10%. Boom. Well, let's get a look. Let's see. Now, a lot of us are desensitized to uh, movie explosions and things like that, like what they're actually supposed to look like. This is massive, okay? Just have a look. It almost looks like a mushroom cloud. No reports of any nuclear blast. Yeah, so I said Lebagon. And uh, Herzog, the president of Israel, has come out and said, uh, it wasn't me. It wasn't me. It wasn't us. All right? So don't worry about it. It wasn't Israel. Don't worry about it. It wasn't. Plain simple. All right, Iran, another enemy of Israel, unveils new long-range drone. Uh-oh, is it heating up? Are they going to launch one of these things? Look at it. It's massive. So what's the big deal? The Shahed 136B drone has uh, new features and an operational range of more than 2,500 miles. Yikes. Almost double that of its predecessors, Iran's IRNA news agency said. 131 and 136 drones have been used extensively by Russia to attack infrastructure targets in Ukraine and have reported range 600 miles to 1,600 miles. So this is new. It's upgraded. It's better. The drones are unmanned kamikaze weapons that can be fitted with a warhead up to 50 kilograms. Yikes. Typically launched in swarms, they are flown into targets where they detonate on impact. A new jihad ballistic missile was also revealed by the Iranian military at Saturday's parade. Yikes. And that one there has a operational range of 600 miles. I mean, it's heating up. It's getting hot. It's getting sticky. It's getting greasy. IDF intercepts cruise missiles, drones fired from Iraq at north and south. So Iraq's getting involved. All right. So, like, it's getting real stinky over there. Look at it. Okay. Anyway, whatever. We don't need to go beyond that. Malicious claim responsibility. So it wasn't the Iraqi government. Whatever. Inside the billionaire bunker, well, uh, some people with money are like, you know what? I don't like what I see. I don't like what I hear. America, America's wealthiest town. Approach at your own peril. Look at this. So this is like obviously a sketch of what it would look like. Whatever. Uh, as my boat as my boat cruises towards the private island of Indian Creek Village, better known as the billionaire bunker, I'm hoping my trip doesn't end in an arrest. It's a hot morning in southern Florida's Biscayne Bay. I convinced two local tour boat captains to pilot me around the perimeter of what is quite possibly the wealthiest and most heavily defended town in America. I'm not entirely clear on the rules about boating near the island, which lies just across the bay from Miami, and neither are my captains. They're both in their first weeks on the job. What I do know is that Indian Creek employs an, a new all-seeing security system and a small navy of police officers who frequently stop and ticket boats that venture too close to the island's manicured shore. Yeah, so I guess they have a perimeter that they own, which is interesting to own beachfront property. Like, that's amazing. Good for you. Well, who lives there? Tom Brady, Carl Icahn, and uh, most recent arrival, Jeff Bezos. 25,000 square foot mansion. Yo, what's up? And we get closer to the shore, I start to notice the cameras. Their beady eyes are everywhere. Whatever. Anyway, so if you want to look into that, uh, Indian Island. Is that what it's called? Indian Creek Village. Sorry. Whatever. Billionaire Bunker Island. Go check it out. Boeing jet forced into emergency landing after passengers start bleeding from the ears and nose. All up out of their grill. Panic on U.S. Delta Airlines flight as passengers were hit by sudden drop in pressure. Yikes. A pilot was forced into an emergency landing after pressure issues in a Boeing jet's cabin left some passengers with bleeding eardrums and headache, bloody noses. Panic ensued as the U.S. Delta Airlines flight from Salt Lake City to Portland, Oregon. As passengers were hit by the sudden drop in pressure, passengers on the flight that had taken off from Utah's special capital told television stations KSL they noticed people bleeding as the plane decreased in elevation over the Great Salt Lake. Pilots of five-year-old Boeing 737, like the bad one, Aircraft noticed a pressurization 
problem according to the flight log yeah so guess what they announced they were returning to the airport but didn't explain why of course you know don't want anyone to panic but they do because their ears and nose are bleeding their brains are coming out of their faces great job boeing still number one at being terrible people known as flat earthers are typically looked upon as if they're conspiracy theorists but what if they're right sort of uh, what's going on According to a study by astrophysicists from the University of Central Lancashire, UC LAN, young planets are actually shaped like candy smarties before transforming into spheres. Whoa. So, I mean, like, if you were going to think Earth is flat, you weren't going to think it's like a slice of bread with 90 degree angles. You would think more like a smarty, an M&M, a Skittle, one of these candies, right? Well, Jeremiah Horrocks uh, Institute for Mathematics, Physics, and Astronomy used computer simulations to model the formation of planets based on the theory of disk instability. So that's the theory. They focus on protoplanets and how they eventually grow to become enormous gas giant planets that are even bigger than Jupiter. Okay, so is this for terrestrial planets or just gas formers? They examine properties of planets that form in all kinds of physical conditions like ambient temperature and gas density. Many exoplanets, which are planets that orbit stars and other solar systems outside of our own <clears throat> have been discovered in the last three decades. Despite observing many thousands of them, how they form remains unexplained. It is believed that they either form from core accretion, which is a gradual growth of dust particles that stick together to form progressively larger and larger objects on long time scales, <clears throat> or directly by the breaking up of large rotating protostellar disks around young stars in short time scales, which is what we call the theory of disk instability. So pieces break off until it forms into a sphere. This theory is appealing to the fact that large planets can form very quickly at large distances from their host stars, explaining sub-exoplanet observations he had. Fenton said the study was arduous. You can only imagine. Moving right along, this woman very eloquently and succinctly explains why she will be voting for Donald Trump in 45 days. And check out the Bart Simpson do. Wow. All right, let's dive in, see what she got to say. There you go, boom. I mean, and the libs will say, no, Trump's just a narcissist and all he cares about is himself and his ego. He's 84 or whatever he is. He's 80 years old. I don't know how old he is. He's old. Like, he don't care. He's lived his life. He was already the president once. But he feels there needs to be a vindication. Trump says he doesn't see himself running in 2028 if he loses in November. So even more reason to vote, Okay. Uh, whether whatever side you're on. If you want to really prevent Trump from ever getting in and you're a Democrat, well, then go out and vote. If you want to make sure you prevent the Democrats from continuously ruining the country like they have in the past four years, because like if you don't believe it, then you must not live in the America. All right. He said in an interview at Air Sunday, he doesn't think, doesn't think he will run. We'll see. We'll see. No, I don't. I think that will be it. I don't see that at all. Hopefully we're going to be successful. Yeah, I hope so too, Donald. We'll see. Anyway, uh, thank you for joining us today on the Sigma Tiger News. You got anything you want to say? Throw it down in the comments. I'm considering removing the mask. I'm going to throw up a poll on YouTube. So if you see it, go ahead and answer it, please. Throw it down in the comments. 
the wife said she doesn't care. The wife doesn't care about Sigma Tiger. She, like, prefers that I didn't do it at all anymore, actually. It's kind of blown up in her face. So I'm looking at removing the mask here. So uh, if we can get some clear, concise uh, votes towards that, then, yeah, we'll do it. If not, the mask stays on. I don't care. Whatever. Sigma Tiger, signing out.